Uh, welcome back to News Hub, and uh, we will take this till nine, where we talk about the first year anniversary of the hashtag against SARS protest, a protest that gripped not just this country, but the entire world. Uh, the hashtag and SARS trended all across major uh, global capitals, and um, the demands were simple. They wanted uh, police reform, and they also wanted justice for those who have been, who have been brutalized. Unfortunately, some of them also lost their lives for several years due to police brutality. It started well, but eventually it did degenerate into anarchy, bedlam, and chaos in the days after the 20th of October uh, last year, and um, billions of Naira worth of property destroyed, and then also, unfortunately, too, we had lives, many of them uh, security agencies lost in the aftermath. And so we talk today, a year after the NSAS protest, and ask whether or not lessons have been learned. We're going to have discussions with uh, a guest in the studio, which I'm going to introduce to you shortly. And we've got a crew outside also, too, at the toll, toll gate, which was the center of, of the activism for the week, over a week that you had uh, the protest happen in Lagos. We understand that we've got a strong security presence there also, too, because you've had the police say groups saying they were going to go ahead with the protest, even though the police had said they had not given permission to anyone uh, to have the protest, saying they would have indoor or virtual, uh, rather than go ahead and have the protest. But enough of my speech. Achike Chude is with the Joint Action Front. Uh, Achike Chude is a civil rights activist for several years. I've known him in the public affairs analyst. It's always a pleasure, Achike, to have you here to talk about uh, issues of national importance. So one year after, and um, You've been through several protests, civil disobedience, industrial action from the past, but this one sticks out like a sore thumb, I can imagine. Yeah, <clears throat> because it was unprecedented. Um, uh, not that um, it is the only one that had a nationwide impact. At the January 2nd, 2012, uh, reaction to the phone price of oil mm. was also a national uh, protest you know, against um, misgovernance mm. uh, that had made the lives of the people very difficult. But this was, was fantastic. I mean, it was unprecedented. It was, it was uh, unexpected. Mm. Um, to see the very much vilified uh, youthful population mm. uh, who so many people had cast castigated mm. uh, for not being in tune with the political dynamics and the economic dynamics of their country, mm. uh, to see them make a stand, uh, to, I mean, take a stand, to see them actually get involved in what you know, uh, is going on in their country, mm. I think was a sight to behold. And to see the kind of organization that was put into it, uh, regardless of the fact that it was spontaneous, you know, but within uh, uh, a few days, it had metamorphosed into something that had become national to a very large extent. I would explain, you know, that letter, and uh, was very well ordered, uh, was very well organized, was exceedingly very peaceful, uh, to the extent that uh, the rest of the world identified with the Nigerian youth, mm. um, commending them uh, for their for their bravery for their commitment to their nation mm. uh, and uh, for their orderliness. Uh, of course, you know that um, uh, each time, across the various centers in the country, each time they were cleaning up, each time, each time they had to leave the stage, they cleaned up the streets, took care of the people that had come to identify with them. And so it was a sight to behold. Like I said, it was unprecedented. We didn't ever believe that it was going to happen in our own time that the youth would eventually realize that this is their country mm. and that uh, they cannot uh, serve the best interests of their country by sitting on the sidelines or sitting on the fence. This time around, they decided to put their heart in the ring and it was a sight to behold. Of course, the other issue of uh, how it eventually ended really had nothing to do with these people. Uh, State-sponsored uh, uh, you know, uh, groups, as far as I'm concerned, and from what we learned, and uh, the 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 pastime of the politicians in Nigeria. They are the ones that know the, the miscreants. They are the ones that know the talks. They are the ones that fraternize with them. They are the ones that use them in election to subvert the will of the people. And so there, is always, there has always been this synergy mm -hmm. between the so-called miscreants and area boys and the politicians in the country. 
-hmm. And they have always called, they have called upon them to do their bidding whenever they needed them. So when they saw where the, dire the direction the Nigerian youths were going, and that they were asking questions of the Nigerian state, the inability of the state to provide for them, the inability of the Nigerian state, the misgovernance that is going on in this country. It started off, yes, as a question of, of police brutality, as an issue of police brutality and the violation of human rights mm. of the every Nigerian, not just the youths. Mm. And then, of course, it dovetailed into other critical issues of state, of governance, of statecraft. Why is the country not working? Why are there no jobs? Why is there corruption in the country? This is what the whole thing was all about until it was subverted by the states and the, you know, and the agents of the state. Talking of the state, the federal government and the various state governments in this country who have always been in bed with the miscreants and with the thugs and they naturally used them mm. to, to give a dog a bad name in order to hang it. Mm. It was really a sight to behold, like you say. And thank you for that opening remark there. It, it feels a bit... It feels a bit sober right now. I don't know if, if, if you feel the same way. It's just yeah. a bit sober. So I'm not as excited as I, as I was when the program started, but we just hope it gets for the better. Thank you so much for that opening remark. But let's head to Okotakot Studio, where we have um, um, another of our guests that will be doing justice to this topic, Henry um, Ekine. Henry Ekine is a legal practitioner. Good morning, Henry. Thanks for joining us um, this morning. So quickly... Um, it's been 365 days after the youth, like no other day, you know, decide to come up and fight for their rights, make demands and ensure that they get better governance and put a stop to police brutality. 365 days later, uh, thanks, you're in, thanks, thank goodness you're in River State. What kind of a taste does that leave in your mouth? Thank you very much. Good morning. Um, it's my pleasure um, being here again. Uh, I think I congratulate uh, the Nigerian youth, the energetic, resilient Nigerian youth, and um, that uh, demonstration of that resilience and then that energy um, in the protests, uh, now popularly known as the NSAS uh, protest, and then one year now. Um, that congratulation is well deserved, and I think that um, it's an indication even to the Nigerian states and Nigerian people and the entire world that uh, Nigerian youths are indeed, um, like the guests in the studio, organized um, and, of course, very energetic. Having said that, um, I I've always maintained that um, the NSAS uh, movement, um, or rather this, the NSAS protest wasn't just a one-stop protest, but a movement that that's, uh, is really um, transcends the, the, the call for the end of um, the special anti-robbery squad then, about, but uh, a symbolic movement that, that uh, reflects the aspiration and the desire of Nigerian youths as to what kind of country they would want and then um, what kind of relationship they, they really think that's reasonable between the people and security agencies, and of course, and the governments in terms of governance in the wider spectrum. So I think that um, what has happened um, in the last one year has left rather um, uh, one to worry whether the government and then the security agencies have learned a lesson. But, but whether the, the protests uh, set out and the movement is, is um, successful, yes. I, I will pride myself as a youth and of course, of course, um, um, Nigerian youth, that indeed that movement was symbolic and of course was successful and then it's going to continue to be successful because it's not going to end. Um, um, but whether the states and the state agents have learned any lesson, one would wonder. However, there, 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 there could be observed some reflection of, um, of um, some consciousness by security agencies um, in, in some areas. But it's still worrisome that in the larger areas, they are really still haven't shown that they've learned any lessons. Uh, moving forward, um, with the, the reflections of the youths and, of course, of, of those who participated in the protest. And, of course, uh, I say my heartfelt condolence to those who really, truly lost their lives. One year memorial today and then uh, one year anniversary of the protest is deserving as well. And uh, I think uh, beyond the end, the NSAS um, protest and movement, the philosophies behind it, uh, it's also a, a, a show of how Nigerian youth can determine consciously 
how um, the system and this, the processes in this country can be patterned, including the electoral process, if we direct our energies and then our thought in that direction. So it's it's also very um, um, important that it indicates to the political office holders and then those in government that indeed they have to reckon with, with the youths. And then, of course, uh, with, with the direction towards good governance, um, effective security, and then uh, ensuring that things are done properly in all respects and in all regards. A brilliant conversation we'll be having back and forth, Lagos and um, Port Harcourt. Uh, Achike, if you think about everything that happened with um, the protest, uh, Henry's talked about, you also talked about the, you know, the, the fine young men and women who were out there. Trying to set an example for what governance and leadership should be, taking care of your own stuff, you know, even after you've left. Did, did, or, uh, a clear you. message for people. Did give they, 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 they a clear message for people, you know, on exactly what sort of lessons they hope uh, to pass across. And you know, you think about also to what the, the what they try to do in passing across the message with the demands they made, the five for five, which are the original demands, and then a, lot, a number of other things were added. But the core, where it concerned the police, they did show they were really genuinely interested in the police welfare. They wanted a psycho evaluation of policemen also to, for their own benefit, increment, increment in police salary and structure. And then on the other side, uh, compensation for the people who have been wronged, brutalized, or even killed by policemen. And then the, uh, the decapitation, what I'd rather even use, you know, of the, of the, NSAS, um, of the SAS um, group itself. One year on also provides us the opportunity to look at those demands and see if we've made any headway. Maybe it'd be something to celebrate in years to come, or it will be what they call in the religious circle um, a yoke on the neck of them in the national or the sub-national about whether or not they've achieved their goals. What are your thoughts? Yeah, um, I mean, if, if, uh, if, if as a result of the NSAS uh, movement we had uh, positive outcomes in mm. terms of uh, the response by the government, mm. then you would say it was very well worth it. Of course, it is well worth it, regardless of the outcome, mm. in terms of uh, uh, the, the government fulfilling uh, the promises they made to the protesters, mm. whether at the federal level or the state's level. Mm. Uh, you know, um, um, the, the youths were, were motivated by altruistic interest, obviously. Uh, it was a pan-Nigerian effort at uh, revamping the country, it was pro-people, it was pro-Nigerians. And the, the, the wonderful thing about the NSAS movement was the fact that um, even though the youths had been at the receiving end of police brutality and violation of human rights by the security forces, they, were, they went ahead, just like you, 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 you said, to make provision for the better treatment of uh, the same brutal uh, you know police um, organization uh, because they also believed that uh, these policemen were nigerians and that if you improve on their well-being perhaps we would improve on the psychology you know they use in discharging their responsibilities and so they were also you know what looking out for the interests of the perpetrators of these abuses with the mindset of making their lives better and that was fantastic Mm. Uh, you know, and, and uh, but unfortunately, see, while the, the movement was a progressive movement for the good of the country and the society, you had the reactionary aspect of it, which we saw from the intervention of the government. It was reactionary. And that's why some of us are not surprised that uh, the, the, the supposed benefits that would accrue as a result of that action were not, were not seen. The system has remained the same, and of course, some of us had indeed predicted that it was going to be cosmetic, that it's not going to be anything fundamental, because they found the system on which the security of this country, the police institution hangs in the country, has not been altered dramatically in any way. It is still the same thing. Mm. It is still the same people with the same mentality of the past that are still in charge of, of, uh, of things in the country. And my people would always ask the question, do we continue to abide in sin, that grace may, you know, to continue in sin, do we continue in sin, that grace may abound. Mm. It is not possible. It's a contradiction. 
So nothing really fundamental has changed because, like I said, the same system remains in place. The same people with the same mentality, Neanderthal mentality of the past, mm. are still in place. And that is why a year later, mm. you are still seeing the same kind of behavior mm. that led to the NSAS thing being perpetrated by security forces, mm. uh, you know, uh, not just the police, by the army and by, you know, other security institutions in the country. And why is that so? Because from the beginning, even after the colonialists had left, they left behind a divisive and militarized polity. Mm. And subsequent civilian dispensations have always strived on that mentality of militarizing the civilian space. Mm. We have seen it on the rise, especially in the past six years, because of the peculiar temperament and mentality of the present you know, uh, occupiers of power in the country. And, and so that's why, but, but it is sad that it has not changed. But I think perhaps, you know, the youths looking at it from that direction were also very idealistic mm -hmm. of what they intended to do. They didn't also understand the full gamut of the powers and the orientation of the Nigerian state. Mm -hmm. If they had understood the outcome that we saw, the negative outcome that we saw, which is the repression, brutal repression of protesters nationwide, would have been anticipated. But for us, you know, it wasn't anything new what the government, you know, did. It is in their nature, mm -hmm. it is in their temperament right. to protect themselves using brutal means, uh, you know, against peaceful protesters. We had seen it. We have been in the field for so long. And this youth that we, that, that, that we are seeing, it's not the very first time that the Nigerian youths have been engaged in the politics of the country with a view to wanting to change it for the better. Some of us, we are also products. We are also students of the dynamic students' unionism and the philosophy, mm. philosophical construct of mm. the Nigerian student of those days, days of yore. When you talk about uh, the, the uh, you know, uh, uh, National Association of Nigerian Students, nuns, nuns, mm. uh, nuns before it was even banned. And so we had, mm. we've always had a restive and a patriotic, you know, youthful population in this country. Mm. But over time, just like every other thing in the country, that spirit of radicalism, that spirit of exploration, that spirit of, of, uh, of uh, that altruistic spirit, that's, that nationalistic spirit had gone down, mm. had gone with the winds, so to say. So for some of us, when we saw what was happening, we had a feeling of nostalgia yeah. because this is who we were, you know, many years gone by, where as a result of a media national, you know, negative national discourse, the average Nigerian student, for instance, or the Nigerian students then had the capacity to shut down the entire institution of the nation across, you know, the, the length and breadth of this country for the purpose of making a point that governance is for us, it's all about us and not about you. Mm. Achike, thank you so much for that one. Uh, we just hope the re repressive mindset will cease to exist and that the demands of the youth will be met, you know, as they continuously strive for um, a better nation state. All right, we have our correspondent, quickly before we get to Port Harcourt, we have our correspondent um, live at the Lekki Tollgate, Victor Mbadiki. He'll be joining us uh, via Zoom to give us a live report on what is happening on uh, ground. If we have Victor, good morning, Victor. Okay, so we can Hi, see. All right, Victor, if you, can, if you can hear, if you can hear me, good morning, Victor. Could you just give us... I can, um, I can, hear, you, I can, I can hear you loud and clear. Absolutely. Give us, tell us what's going on right there at Lekki, at the Lekki Toolgate. What have you seen so far? Well, I'm pretty sure you can see the pictures already. Uh, this, this is something everyone is very familiar with. And here we are again, uh, one year after. People are saying that uh, although we are not, uh, we're not going to see something like what we saw last year, that kind of huge protest that... Uh, it's beginning to look uh, a bit um, rough. Uh, you can see the um, uh, the police team just right uh, ahead of me here, and they're all kitted up. I don't know. I don't know if they're trying to catch some robbers, but uh, apparently they're just trying to get scared the protesters. But so far, a couple of persons have been picked up by the police officers who uh, felt that uh, protests should never hold them in the first place. We have a couple of known protesters who have the placards up and they've been picked up so far. Uh, here, here you go. Here you go. If you can see this, if you can see this, 
I don't know if you can see this. Somebody in green has uh, been kicked up again by uh, the police officers. So uh, basically, basically it's, it's been, uh, we have more security agents here than protesters. We believe that protesters will begin to uh, drive into this venue as soon as possible. But for now, no serious incidences, except of course, uh, some persons, and you can see a Lagos State Task Force ban just right in front of me. We have a few persons that have been picked up already and uh, will be reached away anytime from now. And so basically, not, nothing serious, uh, but uh, what you have here is more security uh, agents than the protesters. So these guys are ready to ensure that no protest is held. Because for those who have been held back as the first person, I'm picked up already. So, it's quite, it's quite crazy. Sure. Uh, Victor Mbadike. All right, so, good, excellent. So uh, tell us, um, you, you know, the, 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 the state police hierarchy had said um, they weren't going to allow people to convene and have the protest. Can you tell us whether any group, whether the people arrived in the group, uh, did they address the press? Um, what exactly was their plan, the people who have been picked up? Uh, well, from what I've gathered so far, well, I just think this is just like a big for the police officers because they're just coming uh, in, in ones and in twos. We've not seen any serious gathering of protesters yet, except for a uh, few cars. I can maybe just show you a couple of them. I don't know if you can see that chief just right in front of me with the measurement flag. Uh, that's what. We've been able to see so far just few cars just strolling with Nigerians uh, hosting Nigeria's uh, flag. Uh, and then, of course, one or two persons have been picked so far. No serious counting yet, but I just think for whoever is planning these protests, uh, they're, they're more like uh, trying to spend one or two persons ahead to check uh, exactly what uh, is going on to see how serious that the police are. Speak to the, the police. Um, officers in charge of this operation to find out exactly what their orders are and um, what, what they intend to do if you have more people coming or you have a vehicle procession try to block off um, access to the, through the toll gate. Is there anyone in charge of the police officers there that you've spoken with? Yes, uh, we, we, we have, of course, we have the senior police officers and, of course, the commander of the uh, Lagos State Task Force, who isn't ready yet to speak with any, any, but, uh, but from their body language, the British uh, government have instructed that they shouldn't allow any of such gatherings. Uh, I don't know yet, but anything could change. In the last couple of hours, we could be seeing um, protesters in their numbers, and at that point in time, maybe they might not have a choice than to allow them. But for now, it is easier to manage a couple of persons. But when the crowd pulls in here, uh, but you know, you and I know that will be quite, quite difficult. Except, of course, we are going to use some kind of brutal force uh, to stop these protesters. So for now, it's just been a roller coaster for the uh, security agencies. Nothing much, except just going to their guns and their canisters, uh, seeking for wounded people, but not, no, no, no victims yet. So, Victor, you're confirming that there has been no car procession yet, right? What did you say? Has there been any car procession? Um, I think uh, flying around on social media. I no, saw it was supposed to start at eight. Okay, just, just watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. This is what we have. This is what we have. We have few. Ca okay, can you see this? That's what you get. That's it. I guess they are beginning to make through their plan. Uh, you can see some kind of car procession right now. Um, Several private people, <laughs> red flag, instead. Well, as long as they are moving, they pick up for the police to pick up these ones. So if they are moving, you better move faster because uh, the arresting are not smiling. Because really, how many cars can you stop right now on the expert? How many? Well, yeah, we hope we can get back to Victor Mbadike um, to give us some update on the, uh, the Lekki uh, Toll Plaza, where the center of protest, yes, last year um, over the uh, NSAS. Right. And, and, and by the way, the, the, the toll gate is still not up and running yet um, because of um, a number of reasons. There's a panel which is going on, and we'll talk about that much later also, too, to find out whether 
the panel and tribunals which are set up um, to look into the abuses, if they've been successful or not. Some people say they're more of distractions than dealing with the issues. Let's, let's head to Port Harcourt. We have still with us uh, Henry Kine. Henry Kine, um, I'm sure that in River State also too, there was a lot of activity around the uh, NSAS last year. And uh, you, you probably have your thoughts also too in how the, the state actors are intending to uh, have a handle of the narrative rather than allow the, the, the NSAS protesters determine how this story is told. What are your thoughts on this one? Yes, um, I, I, I would want to say that back here in River State, uh, there was a candle night um, yesterday, and uh, speeches were made, um, a procession to continue. Uh, beyond that, I, I want to quickly say that um, something worries me right now, the pictures I'm seeing around the Lake Itolga area. Um, I, I would wonder whether there is any justification for the kind of... Uh, of um, military-like um, scene that one is seeing there. Uh, and uh, it appears also that there hasn't really been a lesson. I would, I would have expected a situation where we would have seen rights on the glare of these uh, pictures, um, policemen who probably will be bearing buttons. And uh, let, me be, let me expect that the firearms they are bearing there may um, have uh, ammunition that are not lethal, that are not uh, going to kill anyone, that uh, could probably just to um, really, I wonder whether we understand how to arrest uh, riotous situations, not one that I do not expect that anybody, as we are seeing the civilians there, no one is bearing even a stone, not even a whip, let alone bearing arm, that the Nigerian police will be so heavily armed around that area with um, um, uh, armored vehicles and then their firearms fully loaded. I'm seeing the magazines there that are really, really disturbing. And these are issues that I think we have to mention now. I do not expect a situation where anybody who says accidental discharge or that um, some, some for any reason, which is not justified for any of those um, um, police officers there to, to attempt any shoot at anyone. So it's worrisome. It's worrisome. It, it looks as say, a war um, uh, situation where you could see them heavily armed. I never expected elsewhere if we watch what would have seen here. There's even no serious um, rioter situation there yet. What would have seen would have been some protective guards by the policemen and then battened and probably um, um, water cannons and such um, very civil um, approaches to, to addressing rioter situation. But what we are seeing in this country is different. We do not expect a repeat of whatever happened last year. The souls of those that were murdered brutally uh, and then uh, by state agents are actually uh, probably not finding rest yet. Um, having said so, I would also enjoy that, yes, we are agitating, uh, we are protesting, but I do not think that uh, we, we will also be reasonable to be violent in any way, which, of course, I agree with the, the guests in the studio. The protesters were never violent, even at the last uh, um, year protest. So I, I wonder where we are headed. Beyond this, uh, I, I think again that it's unfortunate. Let's reflect. So just barely about a month uh, after the the passing of uh, the the new police act 2020, I think that was that was assented about sometime September or so of last year, and then the the NSAS protest uh, got on in in October, and then now. The fundamental objective of that new police act is the protection of the rights of citizens. It has never been in any of our police um, enactments or any of the security agencies, really, that one of the fundamental duties now of, of the police is the protection of the rights of citizens. So how do you protect the rights of citizens bearing these firearms that we're seeing and this kind of rights of situation? How do you protect the rights of citizens beginning to arrest people who have come out peacefully to exercise their fundamental right I just wonder, the Police Act 2020 prohibits and criminalizes torture. The Anti-Torture Act in this country criminalizes torture. And specifically, that act has explained and defined and expanded the frontiers of torture, what we mean torture. So I do not even expect this kind of infliction of palpable terror and fear in the minds of Nigerian youth who are coming out to express their fundamental rights that are being protected in the constitution. And already this is a situation that is, 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 is of course, is disturbing. It is torture in a way. 
the, the display of firearms and then by the policemen they're beginning to arrest citizens who I do not think that a reporter ever said they committed any offense, probably merely coming out on the streets to, 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 to express their opinion in the way they have seen and protected by our right, Harry. Thank These you. are thank areas you for of course are really um, very worrisome. If you can hear me, Henry, thank you, thank you so much for that. But I'd yes, like, I I'd can. like to um, um, stay with you for just a bit more and to, to find out what the ambience like was in Port Harcourt, or in River State, um, where you are right now. I, I know you either drove to the studio or um, or had a right to the studio. What's it like? Is it calm? Are there signs of protest to happen? What is it like in, in Port Harcourt? In Port Harcourt, just as it was in 2020, is peaceful, is calm, is organized. Um, yesterday, like I said, was just about a memorial and then a candlelight and then speech is made by um, youths, human rights uh, um, campaigners and uh, civil society uh, um, organizations and all that. And even today, um, as of this morning, I haven't actually got uh, close to the part of Port Harcourt, that's only water lines uh, area, because it's so organized that uh, it's not every part of the city of Potako that you see pockets of protest. No, even in the last year, it was organized at a spot. And that's why one would wonder if any reasonable and responsible security agency would want to interfere in that uh, regard. We would rather expect that they should provide security, just as what is at the Lekki. The police men there should rather provide and protect the yeah. rights of the citizens there. So in Potako, it's been calm. Even as at this morning, uh, there is no news. Uh, all the news are listened this morning is 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 there's been no report of any uh wanting situation or any disturbance anywhere and uh, i also haven't heard um, any such uh, um, um statement by the police uh, restricting anyone from coming out to express his opinion yet all right thank you very much uh, henry Kine. we get back to lagos uh, so while uh, henry was talking about getting thank you henry uh, getting visuals of the toll gate uh, people passing by without much ado if you get, get a got a picture of um uh, Fowles, uh, who is one of the leaders of the NSAS protests, also to drive by in a bus. A number of people also going by. Uh, actually, you, you, look at, you looked at some of those pictures, and uh, what's what going through your mind? A, a quote from uh, Shakespeare, ever not Lucilius, that when true love begins to seeking and decay, it chooses an enforced ceremony. And that is what we're seeing that when a government has lost the ability to govern, it resorts to crude and primitive methods of governance to protect itself and not to protect the people anymore because that is the implication. I mean, uh, Barry Saikini just you know, talked about that uh, situation. The, the people that are there, first of all, protest is a legitimate right under a democracy most especially. Why would people come around there and then the police picks them up and locks them up? That is an abuse of power. And, 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 and it gives you an idea of the thinking and the mentality of the people that are running the country. Uh, you know, they are certainly not doing it on our behalf, but doing it to protect themselves, obviously. And um, it, is, it is sad. But like I said, it is not unexpected. It is there in their nature, it is in their character. They have learned nothing. They have forgotten nothing. Uh, you, you, you know, and, and uh, you, you know, I, one would wish at this point uh, that you had statesmen who are imbued with a true sense of patriotism and nationalism who also understand the democratic dynamics. Then they would be able to respond in a way that people can identify with even much more. There's a way you can even talk to the younger generation. Mm -hmm. There's a way you can appeal to them. There's a way you can, you can, I mean, in those days, for instance, yeah. you know, in the university system, within right. the university system, when students are, are on a protest situation, you'll find yeah. some vice chancellors even join. I mean, the protest is against the vice chancellor and how he's running the institution. But you see some of them join, climb up the days, and then hail the students. Mm. And, and the next thing you begin, the students look, say, look, calm down, let's listen to, to, to him. Mm. So it's about approach. When you want to show them that, that, that we, have, we have power, we have the instruments of coercion. Mm. People will want to resist it. In the first place, this instrument of coercion does not belong to you. It was procured to you, procured for you, by the, I mean, from the, from the posts of the same people that you are terrorizing with the same instrument. Mm. So they do not seem to understand statecraft. And that is why we keep on seeing them move from one folks part to the next, one mistake to the next. 
And it keeps on repeating itself. That's why I say they have learned nothing, they have forgotten nothing. Mm. 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 Wow, interesting. All right, um, let, let's, let's, get, let's get back to Patak at all. We're at Patak Studios where we have Henry Kinney, who is a legal practitioner. I just want to take you back just a bit uh, to get your, your comment on yes. how far so far with the hashtag NSAS Judicial Panel of Inquiry. Um, the five demands were written and pasted everywhere, uh, uh, what's it called, online and on different newspaper uh, and uh, media um, uh, platforms. The Lagos um, Judicial Panel of Inquiry, you know, came to a close yesterday um, and there were mixed feelings here and there about, you know, how efficient it was. How was it like in, how was it like in Port Harcourt so far? Uh, would you say the people are satisfied with, you know, uh, the performance so far or the demanding better? Well, um, I, I recall that uh, there was a time I had to... Um, make my reflection on the the panel that was set in river state um the, the, the limitations for me at the time were such that the time that was given for the um submission of uh, petitions and memoranda was rather short um the scope of uh, areas of complaint was also um i would say constricted in a way that um, never included we, we, we had situations of other uh, extrajudicial um, um, say violation of rights of citizens by other security agencies. And we, we recall then that we made reference to your state where the uh, governor specifically expanded the scope beyond the police and the SARS, but even other military um, um, behaviors that, that violated the rights of citizens. But back here, it, it, those were not uh, brought in. Now we remember that um, around the uh, Obibo area in River State in Port Harcourt, it was uh, the military act tax and the violation of rights of citizens in that area to the extent that the entire area was almost deserted completely. But those uh, were completely excluded from the, 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 the terms of that committee. The committee also had another uh, limitation of the shortness of time. We, we Okay, you look at Lagos, you're saying they were just closing yesterday. In the case of River State, it had closed since how long ago, I can't remember and then a purported report also given. Another uh, limitation for us here appears that the, the unwillingness of the states not to consider the area of compensation. I recall at some point the government had actually even reacted negatively in, in that regard, that uh, if the violation was uh, perpetrated by a federal agency, then why would the government uh, uh, compensate victims with state funds? So those issues for me were, were the downsides of uh, the, the proceedings here in River State. And, and but generally, my, my assessment of uh, some states are were encouraging, I recall that even Delta, uh, um, some of our comrades that were involved in it and then the outcome of that. And uh, we, we, we really also, the one in Lagos, I, I just yesterday, uh, the immediate past uh, president of the Committee for the Defense of Human Rights, which I speak as the National Publicity Secretary, uh, just, just told me that he got uh, a judgment for one of the victims in the Lagos uh, panel. Those are the, with compensation. Those are the kind of expectations that we really had for all the panels. But uh, whether one can have a comprehensive assessment to be able to give a fair reflection of uh, the outcomes of all the panels uh, cannot just be at the moment. But in isolated assessments like this, I, I think uh, the one for Rivers is a far cry, very, very, uh, and, and one who is here. I expected much more than uh, what we had as our panel here. And then the reaction, after all, all the victims are either residents or even indigents of River State. So why would we have uh, thought about uh, compensating those victims of rights violation because the perpetrators were actually state agents at the federal level? It didn't justify that for me at all. We didn't give enough time for even those. There were a lot of persons who were probably just still healing their, their wounds um, of such violations, and they haven't had the time to put themselves together to present their petition or memorandum. And then uh, the time was short and closed. So those we are some of the downsides of the panels and there were some panels that were actually commendable. Thank you very much, uh, Henry Kine. And um, Achike Chude, he's, ta he's touching a very important uh, matter here, which was one of the demands that they have the uh, panels of inquiry, independent inquiry, how independent they are, it remains a matter of conjecture, like Henry talks about uh, in River State. And several other states also, some of them even bother to set up panels at all, to imagine that the, the policemen they have in those states are angels. 
uh, is the fast, fast stretch of your imagination. But, but tell me, the panels uh, were supposed to provide a, 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 a wide span of opportunity in resolving many of these problems. I don't know what you've seen or heard. Interestingly, he mentions Malaki Ogoma, the good friend of uh, the house, with the CD, former president of CD, CDHR, and, and his uh, victory was able to get. But this is still a, a, a tip of the iceberg, I can imagine. Whether it's a military administration or a civilian administration, it's the same end product we're seeing. Mm. Um, uh, of course, we, we know that some of the uh, most despotic governments are usually sometimes not even military despots, you know, but civilian despots. Uh, why am I? You are talking about uh, the panel or tribunal or, or, or whatever you call it. Uh, Fela said that they had the capacity to turn blue to red white to green, hmm. black to yellow, uh, you know, and, and, and so when panels are set up and we know they are not truly independent because the nature and character of the Nigerian state has not changed and the nature and character of the average poli poli you know, poli politician in the country has not changed, you're going to see the same kind of result. Uh, you know, so uh, some of us are not, are not uh, enamored by, you know, the setting up of panels and the rest. They always have a way you know, of subjecting these panels uh, to, you know, be in line with their thinking. And so he who pays the paper always has a way of dictating the tune. And so the panels, as I mean, so some of the controversies, like I'm talking about the panel in Lagos, uh, you know, some of the controversies uh, arising from uh, that panel is not a surprise to people, but it's as a result of the constitution of that panel and the end result that uh, the powers that be wanted to achieve. Uh, I mean, the army, for instance, comes into that and said, look, there was nothing we didn't shoot at anybody. There was nothing like live bullets and all that. And then there is incontrovertible evidence that they were there, they shot people and that they used live bullets. Then they would tell you, okay, well, we used a few live bullets and all that. So all kinds of contradictions uh, same, at the same panel. Uh, so I think the end result is the, what you are going to, the kind of uh, the end result, fella, I talked about ultimately they will turn blue to red and red to green. This is me based on my own experience about my own country and what we have seen over the years. Mm. And because there has not been any fundamental change uh, to the character and nature of the Nigerian state, there will not be any fundamental change in the outcomes of the things that they do. And that's why whether under it was under the military, mm. there was you know all kinds of abuses, there were all kinds of abuses and corruption and so on under the civilian dispensation we are having the same kind of results because the state remains the same. Hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a state of flux. If you think also too, um, I, I'm sure if we, when we get to Henry Kinney, probably we'll quickly also touch on this, is the, the impact. People talk about the state of fear. If you go to many police stations, even in Lagos, the former police headquarters, Camp Salem in Obalende, you still have that place cordoned off a year after hmm. vehicles cannot access the same way it was with Adekunle also to uh, uh, SCID party and many other police stations. The, the, the stations destroyed in the riots that happened. We, we do make clear to differentiate between the protest and then the riots that happened. Two different things entirely, even though maybe one action led to the other. But you still have policemen not in places they should have been in the past. So this fear has continued. What do you think, uh, Acheke? We have maybe a year to the election we've talked about how the police can get back into the system instead you're having more of, of, of soldiers being used to carry out police yeah duties. You, you know it's a signed reminder of where we are in nigeria our country is not working all of this discussion is as a result of the misgovernance and the fact that our country is not working mm. as it should work mm. so this is just one aspect of our nation state are you talking about are you going to talk about health you will see all kinds of canker worms there. Mm. You're going to talk about, about uh, general infrastructure, the same problem you're going to have and all that. Mm. So the state, the Nigerian state, is not working. And this is just a manifestation, a symptom of, you know, a situation, political situation that has, that has gone awry. Uh, you know, um, they, but you know, the, 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 the tragedy of the whole thing is yeah. that the victimizers, yeah. In this case, maybe the police and security forces are also victims mm. in, in, in what is going on. 
look at their the, the condition under which they find themselves, under which they work. Mm. And you realize, you ask yourself, can the police, for instance, as a system, produce anything better? Mm. You know, go to their, you just talked about their working environment, go to their homes, go to the barracks, go to the, uh, you, you know, so you, what, what, what you put in, they say garbage in, garbage out. So it is what the system, what the state has put into these people that they are manifesting, most unfortunately. And, 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 and so obviously we need to do a lot more. Uh, you know, and it's not just at the cosmetic reforms that, that, that we are seeing, we have mm. problems. And I think the sooner we begin to face the fundamental problems of the Nigerian state, uh, you know, it goes back to the same issue of uh, the constitution yes. and, and how we relate to the constitution, how we relate to one another, how we need to sit down to talk about, you know, holistically about what we want to do with our country. But every other thing that we're, that we're seeing is just window dressing. Mm. Uh, you know, nothing is going to change. And that's why we're not surprised that after, one year after the NSAS uh, protest, we're still back to square one. Nothing much has been, you know, achieved except perhaps, and that's a good thing, the yes. knowledge and the awareness by the Nigerian youth mm. that, they continue, that they need to continually engage with their country if they want to continue to have a country to call their own. Mm. All right, Achiki, thank you so much for that. Uh, let, let's, let's head back to the Lekki Toolgate where our correspondent, Victor Mbadike, is on standby as we're recording the event that has been happening so far. Victor Mbadike, any updates from what has happened so far? I think while we were speaking in the studio, we saw the buses, you know, drive past. We saw people in cars. Uh, um, interesting times. Interesting times in the uh, I remember just a few moments ago we said that they are waiting for uh, some kind of real moment. But there, there you have it. Uh, the protest has seemed to have been a bit, a little bit. Then you can see that. Nigeria belongs to all of us. Nigeria belongs to all of us. Nigeria belongs to all of us. And our own people who Do not want to converge uh, just like it did in 2020 uh, to avoid uh, being kicked up by the police officers. So I think the idea is just to have uh, some kind of camp procession you know, uh, in, in their private vehicles, buses, and PM, motorcycles, and the rest of them hoisted the, uh, the Nigerian flag. And most of them keep saying, We will not forget. We will not forget. So whatever that means, uh, uh, just trying to commemorate the victims of. Uh, and SARS in 2020. So basically, it's been a uh, detractor. It was quite, 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 uh, quite heavy. Uh, but somebody tells me that it's much more intense than this. Uh, we've not seen anything yet. I guess these protesters have a plan and they are beating the police officers to get All right, uh, Victor, um, thank you so much. I, I, I want to. Were you able to get. Any comments from any of the protesters? Um, we saw fouls. I think we also saw uh, macaroni. Uh, yes. Well, what? of course. You know, they, you know, you know. It's it's be quite difficult to get comments from them when it's a moving people. But from what we are able to gather, they they they, they said, uh, for the fact that they were able to break through their words, that they will be here protesting is a pointer that no uh, police officer can intimidate them, not even the press release by the commercial police in Tsopaki Modimosu, saying that they will not allow protests or street protests as it is. Uh, I think so far they've been able to get the police officers on this one, uh, because it's been really, really difficult to really pick up any of these protesters, except for those lone protesters who came with their placards, came down from their vehicles, and deliberately walked up to the police officer just to be picked up for whatever reason that they had. Uh, for others, seen several vehicles uh, right uh, that are um. okay how far so far I think it's been a good one um, they are making through to their words like he said yeah. and um, yeah. yes right. so the, the, the Aluta continues Exactly. So we're going to keep our eyes on this one, see how it unfolds. Victor and the entire crew will keep updating us on our different uh, bulletins. Let's cross over to uh, Henry Keating in Port Harcourt to get his closing remarks. Um, Henry. Yes. All right. Yes. Uh, um, really, truly, uh, Aluta continua and the victory is sure. Um, um, Nigeria belongs to all of us, and I think that um, every effort is directed towards a better Nigeria. 
a better society for every one of us, including the state actors who are in service today. Uh, I, I would say one thing to you. Uh, my father, uh, who has passed on, was was in, in the police. He, I, I grew up in the barracks. And then I knew how what my father used to come to the barracks with was a baton. I, I recall when he would make uh, the mobile police uniforms for me as a small child. So I do not think it was this kind of brutal police force that we had. And so, uh, again, and at some point, he retired from service. So those who are having those um, heavy arms and loaded with ammunition there, should remember that someday they will discharge, they will leave the service, and then that they are Nigerians. Not even when until they leave, even while in service. Sometimes you are not on duty. So you mix up with the civil uh, populace, even in your family. You have your relatives. So remember that this is our country. And I think all that we're demanding is for a better Nigeria. We deserve a better society. We have our rights and the rights must be protected. I dare remind every police officer that today, under the Police Act 2020, you have one of your cardinal responsibilities to protect the rights of citizens. You have never had that express, extant in any law. But right now, you have that as a duty. So it's not just the primary duty of maintaining law and order, arresting and uh, investigating um, suspected crimes and then prosecuting people. You have a cardinal responsibility to protect the rights of citizens, meaning you are not expected to see to violating the rights of citizens. You are not expected to torture any Nigerian. It is prohibited even under the Police Act, prohibited under the Anti-Torture Act, prohibited, of course, under our constitution, because the constitution guarantees the protection of rights of citizens to the extent that the dignity of the human person is, is sacrosanct. And you do not have to torture any citizen. Right. So anyone they are picking up today, we do not want to hear any report of torture or any malhandling in any way. And right. that their rights must continue to be protected. That's why in the Committee for the Defense of Human Rights, we say, my right is my right is my right and it's my right. Very well said, uh, Henry Keener. We're going to keep our eyes and Thank fingers on this one uh, to see what happens to those who have been picked up and know exactly what um, their fate will be. Thank you very much, Henry Keene, legal practitioner. He's joined us from Port Harko today. Uh, Achike, yeah. we're, we're, we're up on this one, mm. we, but you're still up with us mm -hmm. on the next CEO. But let's get your closing yeah, thoughts. Maybe, maybe a, a word of, um, for the wise, mm. maybe in line with um, Ikini's uh, uh, position. Right. Uh, the great uh, Zik, Nandi Azikiwe, said one of his immortal statements, a con no condition is ever permanent. Mm. And the only thing that is permanent, Heraclitus, the Greek philosopher, is change. Right. And um, uh, not too long ago, the Bol former Bolivian you know, president uh, was sentenced uh, for, in fact, she tried to commit suicide in the prison. Right. She was sentenced for the massacre of about 12 Bolivians uh, during a political agitation. Then we remember the dirty wars in Argentina mm. and what happened to the perpetrators of uh, evil. So the people that are doing this today, whether at the behest of the state or not, should realize that one day situations change. You know, situations could change and they will find themselves in a difficult situation where they have to account for their crimes against humanity, mm. against the people of this country. We once had a president, a head of state, who became a prisoner and then moved from if he was if he, he fell you know from grace to grass and then miraculously if I use that expression moved from prison back to state house so that gives credence to the non-permanence of the human situation anything can happen so those people who continue to perpetrate evil and to victimize Nigerians and deny them of their Freedom should continue. I mean, there's no other advice I can give them. But the slow hand, you know, of time also moves inexorably. Mm. And, you know, and they could end up putting them in a situation where they have to account for every single blood that they have sp spilled in this country. Uh, so let them take it uh, before it is too late. That is the only thing I will say about Absolutely. this. 
take heed before it is too late. Absolutely. Right. What, what, what goes around comes around. Thank you. Um, at least yeah. that, that, that has been confirmed by the two guests that we have on, to, on today's show. But we don't have to keep doing this. That's my, my perspective. We don't have to keep brutalizing people. We don't have to keep allowing people to die uh, in the name of it's going to happen to you again tomorrow. So let there be peace. The government should listen to the cries of the people and um, walk hand in hand with them to make the world a better place. It has been a beautiful conversation, right? Yeah. Um, uh, for the past one hour on the hashtag answers issue. But we'll give you more updates right here on uh, Silverbird uh, News 24 Silverbird Television. All right, um, this is where I'm going to leave you in the capable hands um, of. Um, of Agogo Obo. Uh, before, I do, uh, before I do that, I think I'd have to say goodbye to Mr. Tujiki uh, Achude <laughs> on this particular segment. <laughs> so thank you so much for the conversation. And I'm going to leave in the capable hands of um, Agogo Obo, who is going to be the one who would moderate. And um, uh, the, the, the next CEO of Nigeria 2023, what qualities are we looking out for? So just keep um, being a part of the conversation, both online and right here on your TV. Remember, it is News Hub Live on Silver Television, Silver News 24. We'll see you after this break.